Hi everyone. Today, let's focus our attention towards an entirely new concept in genetics. It is the concept of chromosomal theory of inheritance. This is a theory. Theory means something which doesn't have an experimental basis, but it is framed based on observations. So based on some observations, a theory was framed. What kind of theory was framed? Chromosomal theory was framed. Chromosomal theory of inheritance was framed. So far in this chapter of uh, Principles of Inheritance and Variation, we have been learning about Mendelian genetics and Mendelian principles of inheritance. So today there is, we have, uh, have come with a new concept of chromosomal theory of inheritance. It is strictly related to Mendelian concepts. So let us just have a recap of that Mendelian concepts, how it is related to our chromosomal theory of inheritance. Okay, so here we all know that uh, Mendel published his work in the year 1865. But though he published his work, his work remained unrecognized. His work remained unrecognized. Okay, till 1900. Though he published in 1865, his work remained unpublished till 1900. Then what happened in 1900? In 1900, Mendel's works were rediscovered. So there begins the chromosomal theory of inheritance. Okay. Mendel's works were rediscovered in the year 1900 by three different scientists, that is they, are, they were botanists, in three different parts of the world and that too independently. So three botanists were independently working on three different plants in three different parts of the world but their experiments were hybridization experiments only as that was done by, the, by uh, Gregor Mendel. He also did hybridization experiments. So that we have learned monohybrid crosses, trihybrid crosses. Similar crosses were carried out by three different scientists in three different parts of the world. That is, they were doing the same experiment independently without knowing who is doing what. And all these three scientists, after doing their experiments, they were actually searching for literature in support of their findings. So as they were searching the support for their findings, they came across Mendel's work which were already published in 1865 and in that things were given in much more details rather than what was discovered by these three scientists. So they were actually astonished to see that Mendel, Gregor Mendel had already published this years back when there was no such advancements in scientific field. There was no advancement in microscopy. There not, nobody knew about a cell. Nobody knew about nucleus. Nothing like that. So before that itself, Gregor Mendel has published all these things regarding how traits are passed on from parents to progeny. In what combination it will come, why it is coming, all those things were already dealt with, were already published by Mendel and he gave mathematical proof for it. And in a well confined manner, Gregor Mendel could publish it. I was, I'm keeping on telling you three different scientists, three different scientists, isn't it? Let us see who those scientists were. Hugo Deveris, one scientist, Hugo Deveris, another one, Carl Correns, Eric Van Schermark. Hugo Deveris, Carl Correns, Eric Van Schermark. We say Deveris, Correns, and Van Schermark. These were the three scientists who 
rediscovered Mendel's work independently in the year 1900. So till 1900, his works were not his works were not given due recognition, or Mendel's works remained unrecognized till 1900. Why? It's a question to be uh, can be asked for your board examination. Why Mendel's work remained unrecognized till 1900? You can just note down four points for that. First and foremost thing is, those days communication was not so easy. Now if you want to communicate something to people, it is very easy, isn't it? But in Mendel's time, communication was not so easy. The second reason was Mendel told that the, the basis for inheritance are factors. And he told factors are discrete units. So first point he told us, the reason for inheritance is, is, is behind some factors. And what factors are he told? Factors are some discrete small units. Now we know they are genes. But Mendel didn't know about that. He told they are discrete units and they don't blend at all. All these things, terms like factors, they are discrete units. They control the expression and they never blend. These were the findings that Mendel had, all, ha, had brought to the world as new things. Factors, discrete units, they don't blend. These things were unacceptable in those periods because nobody could accept such things. In those, even scientists couldn't accept such things as factors, discrete units don't blend and they are responsible for expression of threat. So nobody accepted it. So first reason, communication was not easy. Second reason, such concepts which Mendel had put forward years before could not be accepted in those days. Third reason was he used mathematical calculations to come towards some general conclusions. Isn't it? That concept of applying mathematics in biological science was an entirely new concept which again could not be accepted. So use of mathematics was entirely a new thing in biological field. So it was not acceptable by, uh, by his uh, contemporaries on those days. And the fourth point, most important one, he was just tell, keeping on telling that these are factors, these are discrete units, but he could not provide a physical proof for his findings. All his findings was based on mathematical calculations. He could not provide a physical proof and so it remained unrecognized. So I hope it is the, the four reasons are clear why Mendel's work remained unrecognized. First thing, communication was not easy. Second, terms like factors, discrete units, they don't blend. All these things were not acceptable. And third point, the use of mathematics was entirely new in biological sciences and he could not provide any physical proof for the factors that he had framed. So because of these reasons, his work remained unrecognized till 1900. And in 1900 what happened? Three scientists, Deveris, Corrins and Wanshar Mark, they independently rediscovered his work in 1900. Now comes our theory, chromosomal theory of inheritance. So this was the basis. Okay. Once these three scientists, they rediscovered this work as factors are genes and they are actually moving as Mendel has told. Scientists were actually involved in different, different experiments to find out where these genes are located in a body or in a cell. So they wanted to find out the physical basis of these factors or these genes. So they were actually working on to find out the physical proof for the factors. And if they get this proof, 
they could actually give answer for this question, discrete unit, what that is. And then things will be easy. So work was going on to find out what is the physical basis of factors or genes or where are these genes located. Two scientists, Walter Sutton and Theodore Bovary or Sutton and Bovary, they could crack it out. Now why they could crack it out is all because by the time there was advancements in microscopy and because of these advancements in microscopy, minute details inside the cells could be observed. And one such case of observation was cell division. When cell division was observed, scientists were actually studying the movement of chromosomes. Here comes the word chromosomes. What is this chromosomes? Chromosomes literally means colored bodies. Chroma means colored, soma means bodies, colored bodies. Okay, some, some thread-like structures were found inside the nucleus of a cell and these thread-like structures were called as chromatin by Fleming and these thread-like structures showed some unique movements changing their shapes and moving inside the cell during the process of cell division. Okay, and how it could it was observed? Because there was, there was advancements in microscopy, because of that cell division was studied and during cell division, movement of chromosomes was observed during meiotic phase or meiosis of cell division. We all know that cell division is of two types mitosis and meiosis. In order to understand chromosomal theory of inheritance, the chromosome movement during meiosis was given importance. So, movement of chromosomes during meiosis in 1902 was studied in detail by Walter Sutton and Theodore Bovary. And during their studies, they found out that Chromosomes carry the units of heredity. So chromosome, those thread-like structure, is the structure where our Mendel's factors are positioned or placed. Or chromosomes or those threads are the vehicles or carriers of factors. Now we call those factors as genes. So chromosome carry the units of heredity. What is the unit of heredity? Genes. Chromosomes carry the unit of heredity. Carry, they are the vehicles of unit of heredity. This statement is chromosomal theory of inheritance. Put forward by Walter Sutton and Theodore Bovary. So what is chromosomal theory of inheritance? Chromosomal theory of inheritance states that chromosomes carry the units of heredity or genes and this theory was put forward by Walter Sutton and Theodore Bovary. Now when they put forward this particular theory, they also gave an important statement. What is that? The pairing and separation of a pair of chromosomes would lead to segregation of a pair of factors they carry. Now, what is that statement? See. What is the first statement? Chromosomes carry the genes. Isn't it? Imagine this is one chromosome, this is another chromosome. These chromosomes are carrying genes. The second chromosome is also carrying genes. Now Mendel told that factors pair. One factor dominate the other. During gamete formation, the factors separate out. If it is dihybrid cross, the separation is independent of each other. Isn't it? Now Sutton and Bovary, what did they say? Genes are present on these two chromosomes. 
or factors are present on these two chromosomes. And it is the chromosomes that separate out. When the chromosomes separate out, what happens? The factors placed on them also separates out. So this is another statement that they have given. So what is first statement? First statement is that chromosomes forms the basis of genes or they carry the genes. What is the second statement? It is the chromosomes that pair or it is the chromosomes that separate out during gamete formation. And when they pair or separate out, the genes inside them also naturally pair and separate out. So this forms the chromosomal theory of inheritance. So in simple terms, if it is asked, what is chromosomal theory of inheritance? The statement is enough. Chromosomes carry the units of heredity or genes. And also they gave the statement in supporting that the pairing and separation of chromosomes, of a pair of chromosomes would lead to. So chromosomes pairing and separation is will lead to or will result in segregation. That is separation of a pair of factors they carry. I hope this is clear to you. Okay. Now here we have come across terms like chromosomes, genes. What is the actual difference between these two? See, we, I have told you that chromosomes are present inside the nucleus of a cell, the thread-like structures. Okay. These chromosomes are made up of two things. One is DNA. Another one is proteins. I am giving you a very nutshell form of what chromosome is. Chromosome is made up of two things. DNA and proteins. This DNA is the genetic material. Certain regions of the DNA is functional. Certain other regions are not functional. Those regions of DNA which are functional means which are able to express themselves are those regions are called as genes. So where is gene located? On DNA. Where is DNA located? It is located along with the protein to form a structure called chromosome. So what is chromosome made up of? DNA and proteins. What is there in DNA? Certain functional regions are there. Those functional regions are called as genes. These functional regions are factors which were actually found out by Mendel. So now we know these factors are there in DNA and this DNA are present in chromosomes. So chromosomes carry genes that forms the chromosomal theory of inheritance. So this is theory and for this theory, experimental proof was given by two other scientists. And it is very interesting to know about their, uh, their experiments which gave chromosomal, uh, which gave proof for this particular theory of chromosomal theory of inheritance, about their experiments, about their conclusions, their findings. We shall uh, come together in the, uh, in the next video. And uh, my humble suggestion, all these Mendelian genetics, deviation from Mendelian genetics, all these things are already covered. So if you want to have a clear understanding, a continuous understanding of this one after the other, please subscribe the channel so that you won't miss anything and you will get it continuously. Anyways, I hope chromosomal theory of inheritance is clear to you. Next video, we'll come with the experimental proof how it was done. Thank you for now.